Welcome to Electro Online. Sometimes view requests deal with algebra problems, and so we figure we'll just set up a set of problems that are view request problems that have to deal with algebra. And here's our first one. It deals with distance, rate, and time, and the problem reads as follows. John runs around the lake every four minutes, while Ken runs around the lake in six minutes. Derive an equation that determines how long it takes for John and Ken to meet at the starting point, assuming they both start at the starting point, they begin to run, so how long will it take before they meet again at the starting point, and how many times will they meet in an hour, assuming, of course, they run for an hour and they keep the same pace going for an hour. So it's actually not that easy of a problem unless you realize how to go about it. Now, of course, we can do it using arithmetic, for example, we can say that the number of laps uh, for John, he'll do a lap after four minutes, another lap eight minutes, 12 minutes, then it would be 16, 20, 24 minutes. So we can just go like this for John and for Ken, he does one in six, then in 12, then in 18, then in 24. So you can see that they meet after 12 minutes, they meet after 24 minutes, and you can go on all the way to an hour. But of course, that's not deriving an equation. They want us to derive an equation. So that means we need to come up with something that involves distance, rate, and time. So first, let's come up with the rate. So the rate for John, and we'll write as R sub G is equal to, he runs one lap in how many minutes? Well, he runs one lap in four minutes or a quarter of a lap in one minute because usually expressed in terms of a unit time. So, in other words, the rate is one quarter of a lap in one minute. Oop, that should be an I. One minute. There we go. So that is the rate for John. The rate for Ken is equal to one-sixth of a lap in one minute. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. All right. So that is how we express the rate for John and the rate for Ken. So John can run a quarter of a lap in a minute and Ken can run a sixth of a lap in a minute. And then we need something to express the number of laps. So let's say that N equals the number for John. And let's use M as the number Ken. And then when the difference between n and m is equal to 1 or equal to 2 or equal to 3, that's when both of them will be at the same location again because that means that John will have run one additional lap over Ken or two additional laps or three additional laps. So in other words, when n minus m, notice that John runs faster so n will be a bigger number than m, and if the difference is an integer, in other words, if it's equal to 1, or 2, or 3, or so forth, that's when they will meet again at the starting point. So now we need to come up with an equation that expresses the difference in travel. And of course, the difference in travel is going to be in terms of how many laps one runs more than the other. So we're talking about the difference. How far John travels minus how far Ken travels. And when that difference is one lap, then, of course, John has lapped Ken. So what we can do is the distance of John minus the distance of Ken is going to be equal to N minus M. And N minus M could be 1 or 2 or 3 or 4, whatever it may be, in such a way that the difference between their distance equals an integer number of laps. And each time it's an integer number, they will reach the starting point. And we use the equation that distance equals rate times time. So that means the rate of John times the time minus the rate of Ken times the time is equal to the number of differences in laps. So let's do it for one lap. If we do it for one lap of difference, that's when we'll meet, that's when John and Ken will meet at the same point again. And so what we're trying to do then is find the time it takes to reach one lap. Okay. So, the rate of John, that would be one quarter, one quarter of a lap per one minute. And that's multiplied times the time minus the rate of Ken, which is one-sixth of a lap per minute times T, and that is equal to one lap. 
So, what we need to do is we must multiply everything by 12 to get rid of the fraction. So we're going to move the left side by 12 and the right side by 12. Like this. Which means 3 laps per minute times t minus 2 laps per minute times t is equal to, and of course this is in terms of laps, because laps, so that would be 12 laps. Okay, so we can factor out a t, so we have t times 3 laps minus 2 laps per minute, because we could write over a common denominator of minutes, is equal to 12 laps. All right, I can take the minutes and bring it up here. So I'm going to times minutes. So what I've done is I've taken the minutes in the denominator and moved to the numerator there. And then 3 minus 2 is 1. So time times, times 1 lap is equal to 12 laps times minutes, times minutes. And then, of course, the laps cancel on both sides. So ultimately, how long does it take for Ken and John to get to the same point again, the starting point together? So that would mean that t is equal to 12 minutes. Of course, what we could do is instead of making this 1, we can make that 2. Or instead of 2, we can make that 3. Or instead of 3, you can make that 4. And each time we can calculate again the time that it takes to reach a difference of 1 lap or 2 laps or 3 laps or 4 laps. But what about the equation where we want to find the number of times they'll do it in an hour. So what we can do is we can plug in the, the value for t and figure out what, what the, distance, the difference in n and m will be. So what we can do there is for the second part of the problem, we can say 1 quarter laps divided by minutes, so that's the rate, times the time, which would be 60 minutes, minus one-sixth of a lap per minute times 60 minutes is equal to n minus m. And that would be a minus right there. So this is what we're after now. How many times will John lap Ken in a 60-minute period? So 4 goes into 60. That would be uh, 15 times. 15, that would be 15 laps per minute. The, min oh, the minutes cancel out, I'm sorry, minutes cancel out, so that simply means 15 laps. Minus, 6 goes in that would be 10 laps, equals n minus m, so that means that n minus m is equal to 5 laps, which means that using our equation, we can now also calculate the number of times that John will lap Ken in a 1 hour period. So that means that this equation right here is the equation we can use to solve any part of that problem. It's simply rate of John times time minus rate of John, right, rate of Ken times time equals, well, the number of laps. So in this case, to do a more general equation, we write as n minus m, and that would be the general equation to solve a problem like that. It's kind of interesting because just a couple of days after I got this request and I thought this is kind of an interesting problem. I actually had to use this technique to calculate the ratios of the orbit of, of Mars versus the orbit of Earth to see how often Mar uh, Earth would overtake Mars so that they both will be aligned relative to the Sun. That's called the, that Mars is in opposition to the Earth. And so that very same technique is used for something like that. It's a very useful equation. It's not something you see very often, but at least that is how you solve a problem like that. Couldn't you just use that initial thing, the 4 8, 12? Oh, Can yes. You the equation straight from there? Um, Looking at the trend? Yeah, the idea would be to look at the trend. You could potentially come up with an equation, but I thought of it as a concept of distance, rate, and time. And so the, the concept of distance, rate, and time is that the distance of John minus the distance of Ken equals an integer number of laps. That seemed to be the best approach. It's possible that, and I actually thought about doing that, so that's a good suggestion, that we can just look at these numbers and, and come up with some sort of equation. 
But I believe that if we do it this way, it would be unique for these numbers. Yes, and then you would have to generalize it. So this is kind of like starting with the general approach and then using particular numbers. So I like, I like that method better. Well, then you get a unique one and then from there you figure out the generalized one. Potentially, and that's how some people do it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. how a lot of equations are done from gathering data. Yeah, that is right. Yeah, a lot of equations, very complicated equations, by the way, are done using that and then somehow seeing through the numbers. Yeah. But in this particular case, it was, it, was a date, it was a distance equals rate times time, so I thought that would be the way to approach it. Okay. 